Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. I actually miss Caroline after hearing that. I entitled the message today, Peace is With Us. Nearly 700 years before Jesus was actually born, Judah, the people of God, were going through a very dark time. Kind of like our year this past year. And God sent a prophet, Isaiah, to speak to them and he gave them some hope. He gave them some hope of peace that would be coming. And these are the words that he gave Isaiah in chapter 9, 1 through 7. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and his peace will never end. Who is he talking about there? He was talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. 700 years before he would actually be born. Can you imagine waiting 700 years for that hope to come true? That would be a long time. Two chapters before that, he prophesies as well that there would be a virgin who will give birth to a child and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's why I entitled this message, Peace is with us, because the Prince of Peace came to the earth to bring peace. Now, if we fast forward 700 years to the moment where Jesus was going to be born, not long before that, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, also had a prophetic word. And this is a beautiful verse talking about Jesus. It says, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in, in darkness and in the shadow of death. Now, if you're sitting in gloom and doom and depression and even experiencing death all around you, you are excited to see this happen. You're excited to see some hope and some peace for the chaos to come. And then it says this, and to guide us to the path of peace. Who was Zechariah talking about? He was talking about Jesus. And it would be moments later, Days later, where Jesus would be born, and that night we see the same theme about peace. When the angels said to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. The reoccurring message is that when Emmanuel, God with us, comes, he will bring us peace. And among many other traits and characteristics, peace has come to dwell with us, church, and all of our guests. Peace has come to dwell with us. This year has been uh, not very peaceful, has it? I think around November, I was crying out to God for peace. <laughs> I was ready to see peace. I was tired and, and, to be honest with you, weary of chaos and conflict and troubles. I've been weary of COVID. I've been weary of a lot of things and, and it's still here. And I, I just got to tell you, there's... It's just been rough this year for me personally. And I think it's been for all of us, right? The most unsettling, chaotic, and uncertain time we've ever lived. But yet, in the midst of it, I can tell you that I've experienced peace too. In fact, I wouldn't know the peace of Christ if I didn't go through what I went through this year. We wouldn't know what it's like if we didn't go through what we went through this year. And my prayer tonight in this brief message is that you would lean into peace on earth, 
the person who brings peace on earth, that you would lean into the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Peace, and his name is Jesus, because peace is a person, not a thing you will find here. I had someone recently tell me that you always seem to have a smile on your face, and yet it's been the hardest year you've probably ever been in. I agree with you. It has been the hardest year I've ever been in. I have been smiling, and I can tell you right now, it's not fake. It's been a real smile. Because what I've found is if I apply what the Bible says, if I follow Jesus in this world, he will give me a peace that surpasses all understanding, even to the point of joy. Even to the point that I can still smile and have joy in what we're going through. Not to dismiss what people have been suffering with, not to ignore that. We should acknowledge that people have been having a difficult year. But I can also say that God has helped me have peace. Why is that? Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 7, the peace that God talks about in Jesus, it says this, do not be anxious about anything. Or one version of the Bible says, do not worry about anything. How many know that's like the hardest command in the Bible to follow? Don't worry about anything. Are you kidding me? That's, I can love someone, but doing that, that's tough. He says, in every situation, by prayer and petition or request, with thanksgiving, that's hard too. In every situation, have thanksgiving. He says, present your request to God. So I've been doing that this year. I've been saying, God, there's, here's something to worry about, but I, I give it up and I give it to you and I thank you for what you've done for me. I, I look and see the good that's going on in my life too, not just focus on the things I could be worried about. And then something beautiful happens because of it. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. You can't fathom this kind of peace. Guess what it'll do? It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. How many have needed a guard around your mind and your heart this year to not let chaos enter in, but peace to reign and rule? That's what it says. If we fix our thoughts, look at this next verse, Isaiah 26, 3. Same prophet who spoke about the peace of Christ coming. You will keep in perfect peace. The word perfect there actually is peace in the Hebrew. So you will keep in peace, peace, all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. You will experience perfect peace here on this earth if you trust in Jesus, but you also have to keep your thoughts fixed on Jesus. You can't go, okay, I believe in Jesus, and so I'm good, and then forget about Jesus. No, fix your thoughts on the Bible, the Word, and the promises of Jesus. And we're going to hear more about that promise that Jesus is with us. But there's a scripture that God gave me a month ago. Our church has been reading through Luke, and I found it through our reading of Luke. And I went to the version of Mark to read tonight, and I think it's a beautiful version it's about the story where Jesus calms the storm. And I didn't expect to preach about a storm on Christmas Eve. But then again, I didn't expect storms to happen here tonight either. This is what happens. Because this is a chance for Jesus to show them that he is the Prince of Peace. Like, how many want to know that Jesus doesn't just say, like, people don't just say something about Jesus, but he actually proves who he is? So the followers, as they followed him, they got to find out if Jesus really is who he says he is. And we get to do that too. And in this story, we see that there are going to be in a boat and a storm's going to come. So let me read it. As Jesus came, and just think of 2020, by the way the storm we've been going through, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up, high waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. What is Jesus doing sleeping in the middle of a storm? If you're in that boat, are you kind of wondering what's wrong with this guy? How can he be at so much peace when there's waves flooding the boat? Maybe the reason why is they're going to find out he is peace in the midst of a storm. 
This is what the disciples said. They woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? It's not usually what we do. We go to the worst case scenario. It won't be that we have to bail out, but we're going to drown. That's how bad it is. The storm must have been fierce on this lake. They were afraid of dying. And so they wake him up. And this is what he does. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked. In other words, he corrected the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Also, in the Greek, that means peace, peace. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified and they said, who is this man? They asked each other, even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus got to prove that day as they followed him that he is the Prince of Peace, that he is peace on earth. Can you imagine being one of the disciples wanting him to prove that he is the Prince of Peace and he does it in such a way physically that he shows them I can calm a fierce storm in your life. I'm here to tell you tonight that God has calmed a storm in my life this year. That God can calm storms in your heart, in your mind, in your family, and in this world, if we would do something, if we would follow Jesus through it. What we're seeing in this story is it matters who's in your boat. It matters who's in your journey. It matters who's going to do life with you. Because Jesus was doing life with his disciples. And that little trip across that lake is like our lives here on earth. It's a little trip from here to there. And it matters who is in your life. Now, from the perspective of the followers, they're probably thinking, this guy doesn't even care about us. We're going to die and he's taking a nap. He's back there snoring on a cushion in the middle of the storm. And I thought about this and I was praying about this and I thought, what if God has been wanting us to come back to him this year? What if God is wanting us to actually wake up? What if we've been asleep and not aware and not going to him for help and instead we've gone to the things of this world? What if this Christmas we're being reminded that the true peace that we're looking for here on earth can't be found unless it's in Jesus. That the storm that you're going on, and it's going on in your heart, it's going on in your mind, the fears and the worries that you have cannot be fixed without the Prince of Peace. If Jesus has the ability to calm a physical storm, certainly he can calm a tiny storm in your heart. Certainly if he's there in your midst, he can do that as well. He demonstrated his authority and power over the things of this earth. He can take care of your situation that you've been going through. And I've been hearing it from the first service that some people think this message is for what's coming next. What could be taking place next in our world? If we have Jesus, we will still have peace in the midst of it. Now, can you imagine this life without faith in Jesus? Can you imagine if we didn't have the hope that Jesus is going to come back and save us? Can you imagine if we didn't have the forgiveness and the peace that God has given us? Here's the most important piece, by the way. The most important piece is that when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we were forgiven. And so now we are no longer enemies or against God, but we are family with God when we believe. Now we're at peace with God, so spiritual peace. And then he offers internal peace or emotional peace. He offers us that if we were to lean into him and pray to him, he will give us rest. He will give us peace instead of worry and anxiety. And then he offers us peace with everyone else around us, that if we love and forgive one another, if we love our fellow man, that we can live at peace. But there's only one thing that we have to do. We all have to follow Jesus' example. We have to let him be part of our lives in our trip across the lake. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering, oh, wait a second, didn't Jesus go to heaven? Didn't he go back with his father in the Bible stories that we read? Yes. 
So how is it possible that there can be peace on earth if he's there and we're down here? Well, Jesus took care of that too. In John 14, he says this, when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I've told you. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give, ready for this, is a gift the world cannot give. You will not find anything as peaceful as Jesus in this world. So don't be troubled or afraid. He says two chapters later, don't be troubled or afraid. Here on earth, you will have many trials. You will have many sorrows. We're going to have storms. God doesn't sugarcoat that in the Bible. I don't know who taught us in our world that everything's going to be perfect in life if we believe in Jesus Christ, because that's not true. Jesus said it right here. You will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And everyone who believes in Jesus will also overcome sin and death and have everlasting life. That's why Jesus came to this earth. So we may have to go through temporary trials and storms in years like COVID and other things in 2020 and whatever comes next. But the promise is eternal peace when we trust in Jesus and follow him. That is the promise that we have. And you ready for this? He, he went to the Father, but he gave us his Holy Spirit so we could experience a taste of that peace right now. That is the peace I've experienced this year. Those times where I was down, the times where I was depressed, the times where I was hurting and discouraged, I would uh, practice what the Bible says and I would feel that God would get me through. I would see it. And people would even come to me and encourage me and I could tell that God was lifting me up. And I thank God for that. So here's the bottom line tonight for this Christmas message tonight. We can experience peace on earth because peace is with us. That peace is a person, his name is Jesus. Jesus is with us through his Holy Spirit. We don't have to go through this difficult world alone. God wants to be with us. He proved it because he became Emmanuel, God with us. Over 2,000 years ago, he said, I want to be with you. So his son Jesus came to the earth to dwell among us, to show us the path of peace, as Zechariah prophesied, the way to have peace with God, to have peace in here, and to have peace with everyone around us. If we would follow Jesus, we will discover that that trip across that stormy lake is doable. It's possible. And we may even be able to smile along the way. Thank God for that. How many of you have experienced joy in the midst of this crazy year this year? It's okay if you haven't. It's been a rough year. But thank God we've experienced joy. And Christmas is a reminder of the joy of the Lord and the joy that came to our world but it's hard to have joy when you don't have peace with God, peace in here, and peace with everyone else. I'm going to encourage you to do something. I chose to follow Jesus many, many years ago. I chose to not find peace and joy in anything this world can offer. You know why? Because God created this world. Everything else are created things. The only thing that can give us what we need is the person who created us, and that's God. I want to encourage you to invite Jesus to be the Lord, in other words, the leader or master of your life, to lead the way. I want to encourage you to invite him to be the savior of your sins tonight. And you can simply just tell him, save me from my sins. I accept what you've done for me on the cross. Thank you for forgiving me of my sin. I want to follow you through this life because I know if I do, I will have peace on earth. You can say a simple prayer from your heart. Start that journey tonight. I did. I'm so grateful I have. I wouldn't be able to get through this year, and I won't be able to get through whatever comes next year if it wasn't for the peace of Jesus. There's a powerful prayer I want to end with, and then I'll give you some instruction for our candlelight time. The Apostle Paul prayed this prayer over the church. I want to pray this over you and your family, and everyone who's joined online, I'm praying this as well over your life 
wherever you are watching. We've had people watching from other countries, other states, and right here in our state, it's been beautiful. This is the prayer he says. You can close your eyes with me. And I pray this over you this year. May the Lord of peace himself, may he give it. May he give you his peace at all times and in every situation. The Lord be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.